All right, DJ, now that we are uh, two days removed from the combine, wh- what's your impression? What did you come away with from Indy? I, th- I think it's, the, you know, the quarterbacks. I think some years, and, you know, we all know what those years are like when you're trying to drum up interest in quarterbacks and, you know, gosh, you know, I think that maybe there's only one first rounder, but let's how high does he go? And then you get a year like this one where you've got four guys, and really I would add a fifth with Hen and Hooker, who I think is a good player, and I think it's going to be intriguing to see where he lands. But really that big four, um, you know, from schools that people are familiar with and people have watched them, and then you go to the combine and three of them throw, and I would say, you know, the athletic display by Anthony Richardson as well as the fact that he threw the ball, you know, extremely well. And then I thought Stroud, even though he didn't run, had one of the best pure throwing sessions that we've seen Um and we've got teams with needs at the position. So it's like this This is the next phase of it. We saw them all deliver, and now we're going to see these teams uh, see who wants to get antsy and, and, and jumpy and go make it happen. Well, I had Anthony Richardson on yesterday, and I started walking down the teams asking if he if he met with them. Um, and when I got to Indianapolis, you know, obviously met with the Chicago, and he said he met with Houston. When I said to Indianapolis, he paused and he said informally, can you um, yeah. can you interpret that for me? What does an informal meeting at the combine mean, Daniel? So you're restricted. You're restricted by number uh, to the guys you can bring into your formal, you know, 15 minute interviews. I think they might even expand expanded that to maybe a 17 or 18 minute interview. But you, th- those are on the list, and those guys, when you see the the players walking around the combine on the back of their credential, has the list of the teams that they have to formally meet with. Right. Meaning they have this is the time and place they are going to meet with them. Outside of that, they will pick the whole pool of players, and they'll have their own time in like. You know, you're kind of like an open area of the combine, and then teams can informally come up to them and talk to them. But it's, you know, you don't know. It's come, it's get it get it as you can there for all those teams. So it was a very informal conversation, um, but I would imagine the, the bulk of the Colts' homework is going to be on uh, bringing those guys in for visits into the facility as well as visiting with them for private workouts and pro days. So I guess they figure we'll meet with them eventually. We don't have to use up one of our spaces at the combine because that – that's kind of yeah. Interesting. I mean, I think that's 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 probably the way it is. I always think that anytime you get a chance to to visit with these guys, you want to take take it. You know, yeah. You talk to them enough, get comfortable with them. But yeah, they chose to allocate those resources elsewhere. Maybe also, you know, maybe just spitballing here. But maybe when your owner comes out publicly and says how much he likes a particular quarterback, you might felt that that damaged a little bit of your. Uh, of your leverage and so maybe just kind of playing it cool you know play a little hard to get here to reset a little reset by letting everyone know yeah we didn't meet with any of them at the combine you know we didn't do that you know maybe if one falls you know maybe we would take one but we're not desperate (laughs) that's not us oh my word daniel jeremiah here uh on the rich eisen show uh who helped themselves the most do you think with the workouts well yeah, there was there was some good ones, man. I mean, Kalijah Kansi, to me, I don't know that I've seen one like that in terms of you, you get a defensive tackle who is really, really explosive at Pitt. And, and you know, the obvious comparisons are going to be there with Aaron Donald being undersized and, and being the best player in the entire league. So that's lofty expectations to try and hold up to. But he's listed at six foot 280. I can't tell you the number of times, Rich, I've gone to the combine and guys are listed on the website at six foot 280 or when I was scouting a thing actually called a program. Uh, media guide uh, for those that are young aren't familiar with those uh, <laughs> fine pieces of paper but I've never I don't recall many times where a guy comes in and he's a full inch taller than he was listed so <laughs> I was worried he was going to be 5'11 270 pounds and be like gosh what do we do with this guy he comes in he's 6'1 even 281 pounds he runs a 4'6'7 so insane. uh he helped himself tremendously and that's just one uh one defensive player you got an offensive player that may have helped himself tremendously yeah there was a there's there's a ton I, to me the you know we've talked about the quarterbacks and uh you know obviously that group I, I think when you look at the tight end position i referenced during the broadcast i think it's the best we've had in a decade and when you see you go out there and you see darnell washington at 264 oh my pounds run 464 and then add in the highlight of all highlights with the one-handed catch on the field just showing you what an athletic freak he is and i i would say also Nobody, nobody has moved Fred the sled That's right. quite as efficiently as Darnell Washington. For real, he role. he did a better job of moving that sled than the offensive lineman did, than the he actual offensive lineman. He was impressive, and I, I would say Sam Laporta too. You know, Iowa's been a tight end factory 
he came out there. He run he ran under four six and had an excellent uh, field workout. So I, I thought a couple of those tight ends uh, were impressive, and the running backs. You know, it, that's the those are the two deep groups on offense, and I thought both of them really worked out well. Bijan Robinson was awesome. Jameer Gibbs from Alabama ran under four four. Zach Charbonnet from UCLA looked good. Tajay Spears, who we highlighted, and then uh, Rich, you got a chance to give out the first ever Mr. Hustle Award uh, to Evan Hull from Northwestern in the combine. <laughs> Did you guys see that part of the running back workout? Evan Hall, every rep, took it to the house. Oh, I did notice that. He ran into the end zone. I didn't every, notice he was doing that. Every rep running into the end zone, and we had, you know, the, the next-gen um, discs, the Zebra player technology. data. Yeah, the player tracking data, the, the Zebra technology discs that are on them, so they track all their steps. Evan Hall of Northwestern had the most steps of any of the running back group <laughs> by far because he took each one to the house, which was wild. I'd never seen that before. In the history of the combine, um, so uh, I remember going to basketball camps. Rich, do you remember like you go to sport camps when you're a kid and they give you oh the most most outstanding camper? But then they had the Mister Hustle Award. You know, like that's I think we need to I think we could call that the the Evan Hull Award going forward for, for, from every combine like that. on the end of history. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern for free.